Hi guys. Uh, hey folks, I'm Tina Hui with All the Coin. We're at the Stanford Blockchain Workshop, and we've got Adam Levin with us. Adam, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm from uh, Chain.com. We're a Bitcoin API for developers and enterprises building blockchain-enabled applications and services. So what does that actually mean? It means that uh, we have an API that developers can use to build all manner of Bitcoin services. So we have remittances and exchanges, wallets, people building you know, Bitcoin into their video games or their, their iPhone games, mobile apps, merchant tools. Uh, it's an uh, issued asset sort of services, all, all manner of sort of blockchain enabled, data enabled uh, apps. So uh, our goal really is to make it as easy to build with Bitcoin as it is to build with any other type of technology. What do you see as kind of a pain point for folks to get into it? First, understanding it. Um, it's pretty complicated to wrap your head around if it's your first day sort of trying to understand how to use the technology. Bitcoin um, provided this amazing solution to the problem of double spending and introducing digital scarcity um, into transactions online. Right? But it, in order to do that, it introduced several counterintuitive solutions. Um, so the timestamping solution of the blockchain is relatively counterintuitive to most developers the first time they see it. Um, uh, the fact that there's no notion of an account, but rather the private key represents your ability to move funds around the network is counterintuitive if you're not sort of coming from cryptography as your background. So really introducing those concepts is usually the first hurdle. And the second hurdle is um, getting going. Um, so uh, it's, it's an open source technology, you can run a node, but keeping that node online, getting the data in the format you need, composing the transactions the way that you would need to to really build a service is not trivial. Um, and so helping developers sort of get through those first uh, first few days is really important for us. You guys have an incredible blog. Um, so is it mostly you writing it? And tell us about kind of the company. Sure. So everyone on the team uh, writes for the blog. Um, and uh, really we try to keep the blog at blog.chain.com um, as engineering focused as we can. So if you're a developer interested in building Bitcoin service, um, we want that to be the audience. And uh, the ethos of the company was uh, our team, we were a small team of four, and we were building different Bitcoin apps. And we kept running into the same problem, which is the friction around actually uh, keeping the infrastructure stable, keeping the connections to the network stable, keeping the data in the right format, um, dealing with the private keys. All of those problems just kept presenting themselves to us, and we thought, well, instead of solving it for every single app we want to build, let's just solve it once and provide that as a service. Right, why not? And um, so, if you're a developer, so say there was a hackathon for Stanford yep. blockchain workshop. Yep. Did you watch it? What interesting projects stood out for you? Yep, so uh, we've participated in lots of hackathons. Um, I wasn't at the hackathon this weekend, uh, but I think what was really unique about the work here at Stanford and the work that started out at Harvard and MIT is the focus on using the blockchain as an identity mechanism, as a reputation mechanism, as a voting mechanism. And because of the sort of immutable nature and the fact that you can put metadata through what's called the op return on the blockchain um, and, and use that as a pointer to other documents, uh, the potential to essentially have this decentralized uh, layer of trust and this decentralized way to uh, to share knowledge across organizations um, is really powerful. And so I'm excited to see what startups uh, or, or what ideas emerge from the weekend. Why did you start a Bitcoin company? Like why Bitcoin? Um, we started a Bitcoin company because you know Bitcoin's a once in a generation type of transformation. It's a very, very unusual thing to have something this profound happen um, uh, in technology. Uh, most of the technology we're familiar with is building on top of a stack that's been building up for for a couple of decades. You know, TCP/IP and the web and these large platforms and consumer platforms, um, and finally, like the application layer that's sort of where most developers go because they're building iPhone apps, building web apps. Um, Bitcoin represents like a totally new stack. There's the internet and there's the blockchain, and, uh, and really we're at the ground floor. So um, we saw that and we thought there's going to be a whole bunch of applications built on it, and we'd like to make it really easy for people to do that. So what are some of the best features of Chain? As opposed to, I mean, what differentiates you from, say, 
providers. Yeah. So first and foremost, this is all we do. All we do is provide infrastructure to Bitcoin services. So it's laser focused. Um, our team, all of our engineering team, came from other infrastructure companies. So our two founding engineers, for example, were early engineers at Heroku. They built Heroku for four years, and bringing a lot of that same rigor of uh, uh, of engineering and also product orientation for making it really, really easy to use for developers, making the documentation really great, and focusing on features. Great. Tell us, what are you going to speak about on your panel? So today we're talking about uh, security. So specifically, how secure is the blockchain as a network? Not so much how do you keep your Bitcoin secure, but how confident should we be in building applications and services on this new open network? Can you give us a sneak preview of the Well, um, one of the key questions that everyone has is how anonymous is Bitcoin? So if I build a service, on the blockchain? Am I going to be putting my users at risk? Are people going to be able to figure out how much money they're sending back and forth between one another? Um, and my hope is that I can communicate that really, um, while Bitcoin is you know, a very anonymous means uh, for uh, transacting, it's, it's actually not very private. In other words, um, uh, you can still track it back to who's sent it. You can, you can still see all the transactions. All the transactions are public, right? No identities are associated with it, but all the transactions are public. And so, what uh, services like like Chain.com and others have figured out is that you know introducing a layer of obfuscation so that uh, user data, application data, is not as easily uh, traced or, uh, or uh, you know, reverse engineered back to transactions. So it's a valuable service for anyone that's going to build any large scale financial product. Right. No. So what do you think about the disruption of fintech? I think that um, actually something slightly, uh, probably you wouldn't expect me to say, which is that I think the large incumbent financial institutions actually have a real opportunity to take advantage of, of, of Bitcoin as a protocol as much as startups have an advantage or an opportunity to really build something special. Right. Uh, and the reason for that is, and I don't think mo many of them will, I think most of them will not take advantage of the blockchain, but the ones who do already have um, existing security infrastructure, they have existing you know, ways of thinking about managing private key material, they have good relationships with regulators, um, they, uh, they think about um, security sort of top to bottom, from the physical security to the sort of uh, authentication schemes that they use. So they have a lot of the pieces. It's really just going to take sort of insight and leadership from the top of these organizations. Um, but the blockchain represents a huge opportunity for them. Um, and uh, in particular, you know, the blockchain resets, like I said earlier, like resets the whole stack. Mm -hmm. So today, if you're a financial institution, if you want to build a payment service on the internet, you have to build an app on someone else's platform. Right. To build an app on Facebook or Apple or Google. Um, Facebook just launched a messenger payment. So. That's right. Um, uh, but if you're a financial institution and you want to go, you want to just go direct to consumer and not build with someone else's platform, the blockchain represents a really unique opportunity to do that. So, what do you think is the big value proposition of being an international commodity or currency, or do you see the blockchain being the winner? I think the, the the core value proposition is it's a protocol for moving money around that's native to the internet. It's not strapped on the internet. It's native to it, uh, which means that you have a system which is interoperable. So, banks, uh, retailers and different merchants and partners in the ecosystem can finally speak a common language. Right now, no one speaks a common language. Everyone is, as a mainframe, running their own you know, legacy infrastructure. It's extremely expensive to integrate. It's extremely expensive to change, to experiment. Um, with the blockchain, you get a common language, common system. It's global. And so you can actually move very quickly and build things. Um, uh, it's very fast and it's very cheap. Right. So it's really, uh, what's holding I think a lot of people back is that they're still uncertain about Bitcoin as a currency. Um, but I think for many reasons that will actually, that concern is going to be seated in the background as people really figure out how to take it. Do you agree with the legislation that 
I think regulation will, yeah, I agree. I think it's going to help build confidence. I think the regulators are going to land largely at the right place um, because, fundamentally, because Bitcoin is a global phenomenon. So, any regulatory uh, agencies in any country which decide, okay, we're just going to turn this off, all they're really doing is moving the opportunities to different countries. So, um, I think that it's, it's a little early to say for sure, but there are uh, good, there are signs that regulators are going to end up in the right place. Right. Well, I mean, overall, the discussion piece has been that it's going to kind of fall within the same realm of money transfer. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's exciting for you in 2015 for I think 2015, um, a lot of the infrastructure will have been built. Uh, companies like Chain, uh, companies like Blockchain, uh, companies like Bitco have done a lot over the last 12 months and will do a lot more in the next 12 to really provide, to sort of level up the whole foundation of what's possible. Right. And from that foundation, I think you're going to see a lot of really interesting applications. Um, one of them uh, that you know, sort of does not use the currency per se, but takes advantage of the blockchain, has to do with, you know, issuing assets on the blockchain, and using it as a mechanism for sort of low cost custody and uh, uh, asset issuance and the transactions. Come on. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what people do. Uh, yeah, we'll it's going to be exciting to see where you guys take your companies as well, right? Since you guys are the big players. For instance, the list of uh, startups today that came up all over the internet, and I was like, yeah, I wouldn't list uh, Chain or Bitco or even Coinbase as a startup. <laughs> I would. It feels, it's, <laughs> we were, I uh, wouldn't. <laughs> I feel like we're definitely. Yeah, I, I think uh, <laughs> for all the, you know, is companies in the Bitcoin ecosystem. I think what really will count over time is not to compare ourselves to one another, but really to think like, how well are we performing as a company in, in sort of in a general sense in the technology sector? Um, and so uh, the prize is much, much bigger than I think people realize. And uh, the companies that have really set their sights on a, broader, a bigger vision, I think, are going to do very well. What do you think is the killer app? <laughs> I think the killer app is. Is the is going to be uh, is going to be around asset issuance, um, and what I mean by that is using the blockchain as a uh, mechanism to facilitate the transaction of many many different types of assets and currencies. Um, so I think really what we're going to see emerge over the next couple of years is like a digital asset economy. Um, I think Bitcoin is just the first. So uh, I define Killer App as like crossing over the mainstream. And I think the mainstream will largely not experience Bitcoin as a currency. I think they'll largely experience new financial products that are enabled by the blockchain. Um, and I think a lot of those will be currencies or tokens that um, are, are, are familiar as brands uh, as opposed to Bitcoin as a, as a <laughs> so they always say whatever will speak to consumers, have them transact without them knowing it's Bitcoin. Uh, I, I think, yeah, my, my bet on the near term is that for the most part people won't know. The, the most common use cases uh, will be things where people don't know they're dealing with Bitcoin. Um, I think microtransactions will, will continue to grow, and as you say, like, remittances have done very well. I think all of these things will continue to work, but the killer app, the one that really will go to mainstream, I think the first few uh, in the industry will all be able, will know, of course, this is blockchain based. But I think consumers, you know, moms and dads out there aren't going to know necessarily on day one that what they're experiencing is actually a blockchain service, but it will be. Very interesting. So, are you more uh, a fan of blockchain or Bitcoin? Can't separate the two. Um, you know, the blockchain is a very big, expensive database. You can think of it that way, and it's funded by Bitcoin. Um, miners don't do this out of the courtesy of, you know, or, or the goodness of their heart. They're doing it because they're being, you know, paid back. They're investing a lot of money. They're getting paid back in Bitcoin. So. We need a we need like a vibrant economy of Bitcoin services to yeah, really fund the blockchain. Uh, but I think longer term, uh, the block blockchain enabled applications and services are going to be more widely um, used than you know Bitcoin experiences. We're using Bitcoin to buy something. Or pay for it. 
I know. I've been to your office. Your office was amazing. Was amazing. And so, tell us more about the team, the company, funding. Sure. So, we've raised uh, $15 million today. Um, our team is uh, uh, over 10 people. Uh, and we're hiring quickly. So, in the next couple months, we'll be closer to 12. Um, we, uh, we've got really an engineering center of the team and culture. We build everything in the programming language called Go. Uh, and we support lots and lots of different uh, languages for us. And so, uh, our, the ecosystem we power has you know, people building all sorts of platforms. Our, our services are built with Go. Uh, and we're, we're certainly hiring. So, we like to hire people that are. There you go. Uh, that have excelled at other infrastructure companies. We don't necessarily hire for knowledge or experience. Really, we're excited about finding people who have worked at other development platforms um, and done well there, either in products or engineering roles, and then bring them into the Bitcoin ecosystem to really see you know, what's other best practices they can bring to other places. What is kind of the company culture you um, it's very team focused. So uh, it's very collaborative. It's very much uh, driven by the customers that we serve. So uh, being able to really listen to developers, have empathy for their problems, and then formulate solutions that really solve a need. Um, as opposed to uh, solutions that come from a place of or something like that. Like it's really, really, really pragmatic about helping to solve the problems for so that's, that's really the heart of our culture. Yeah, service and development. Yeah, we gotta do a whole something again at the office. Sure, yeah. We'll follow the questions. Great. Or have the problem. Why not? They'll start to smell, right? We actually have an SF Bitcoin developer meetup tonight at our office. Oh, look at that. Yeah, no, that's one of the best. Right after Stanford, I'll go back to the office. I know, I think I see you at every single event. It's my job to be out there. We're all in that grueling schedule. But thank you so much, and we're going to see you on the show again. Hopefully, more. Bye, guys.